Hello, and welcome to the Word of Faith Ministry. Today, I want to talk to you about keys to effective prayer. Yes, how to get results when you pray. And the first thing we have to uh, establish is, as Christians, we have to have a prayer life. And if you want to be you know, a, a prayer giant, a prayer warrior, then you're going to have to be a person of prayer. You're going to have to be intentional about it. You're going to have to be determined not to let anything or anyone, you know, uh, take uh, distract you from prayer. We have to be people who are people of prayer. Just like, just as we are called to be worshipers, we're called to be a thankful people, we're called to live a, a lifestyle of righteousness and holiness, a lifestyle of repentance. What well, we have to have a prayer life. And, and there are Christians, yes, who do pray, but then they don't see results to their prayer. Well, I want to teach you how you can, can pray and see results. But first, we have to establish the discipline of prayer means we have to pray. You have to pray. It's not just, okay, well, you know what? We, we prayed on Sunday or we prayed over a meal and it's a little five-second thing. It's so much more to it than that. Prayer is surgical. And if you want results, if you want to see answers that you've been looking for for a long time, then you're going to have to understand that there, there are certain ways that you can pray in deeper levels, in deeper degrees, so that you can see results come when you pray. In Colossians 4.2, the Bible says, continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Continue, and then don't just pray once and think, okay, well, you know what, I did that and it didn't work, so I'll try something else. No, we have to be people who pray. Continue in prayer. It's a continuous thing, because that's a part of our lifestyle. Prayerlessness is sin. If you, don't have a life, if you don't have a prayer life, then you are in sin, whether you want to realize or not, whether you want to accept that or not. Jesus prayed. Every time you see in, in scriptures, he went apart, he went into the mountains, he went to different places, and he prayed unto the Father. Think about it. Well, we need to pray unto the Father in Jesus' name. Think about it. We have the If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit living in on, side of, on the inside of you. And the Lord will teach us to pray, but you have to have ears to listen. You have to you know, uh, have your focus on the Lord, on his word, on his presence. And when it's time to pray, yes, you can hear from God. You'll be able to hear from God, but you're going to have to have your listening ears open. You're going to have to learn to wait upon God. And it's not, when we talk about waiting upon the Lord, it's not we're waiting him to do something. No, we're waiting on him and we're not getting ahead of him. We're waiting to listen to what he wants to do in any specific area in our lives. What he wants to do in any specific, you know, uh, situation. But we have to quiet ourselves before him. And we're going to look, like I said in a moment, and some of the uh, uh, keys to having effective prayers. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, very short scripture we often quoted, but do a lot of people really understand what it means? It says, pray without ceasing. Very simple. But it packs a bunch. Pray without ceasing. That means don't quit praying. Don't stop praying. It's not just, okay, well, you know, I, I, I prayed once and I didn't see a result, so now I can just think of something else. No, don't stop praying. And now it says, without ceasing, obviously, you know, there's other things we're going to be doing. Obviously, we know, you know, there's going to be times when you're going to have to go to the grocery store. You're going to have to do that. It's not saying that all you're going to do is sit there 24-7 uh, and just pray and then and never have other things going on. This is talking about a lifestyle of prayer. It means you don't quit praying. It means you don't just say, well, I prayed on Monday, so I guess Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday I'll take a day off. No. Prayer is something that we're going to do every day. It's a continue, It's a lifestyle. Don't stop praying. If you don't see results, then you need to start changing the way that you are praying. Like I said, there's a lot of people who are praying prayers of unbelief. They're praying, but they're not believing what they're speaking is going to come to pass. Well, there's a reason. There's a reason. Because if you're praying in, in, in doubt and unbelief or just wishy-washiness, then no, you won't see results. If you want effective prayer, I'm going to give you a couple of keys. And those are, we have to pray according to God's will, which is his word. That's one of them. The other one is praying in the spirit. That means praying in your prayer language of tongues. And both of these, we have to understand the undergirding of it is we have to pray specifically. See, a lot of people are praying generic prayers. And guess what? They don't work. They may, they may you know, um, uh, make you feel good for a couple of minutes. They may, like, kind of pat you on the back. But they're not effective. No, prayer is not just some generic thing. No, prayer is surgical. Prayer gets to the root. Prayer gets to the nitty-gritty. 
And we had to understand, just somebody standing by a pulpit or by a, a, a webcam saying, oh, Lord, let's pray for Brother Jack. Amen. That's not prayer. Well, we need to find out what, what specifically is, is hurting Brother Jack. What specific need does he, does he need? Is it healing? Is it deliverance? Is it a financial issue? What specific part of, of, of healing does he need? Is it needs to be delivered from cancer? What is it? We need to be so specific. And we pray specific in aligning with God's word. And we know God's word says healing is a part of his will. Guess what? We're going to see results. But just to say some, you know, willy-nilly thing like, oh, let's just pray for Brother Jack, amen. Or let's, or in the sense of deliverance, oh, oh Lord, deliver uh, Sister Carmen, amen. Well, no, let's get to the root. Let's find out what areas need to be moved out of their life. What doors have they opened? What specific thing needs to be broken off, canceled, moved out of the way? What things do we need to pray for? And about in this situation, prayer is specific. And if you want to see results in your prayer, then you need to start praying specifically. And we're going to go to 1 John 5, verses 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. It says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. Now, so we can have confidence that our prayers are answered. We can have confidence that God hears us when we pray. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Think about it. It says we can have that confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. It means we have to pray according to his will. Like I always say, his will is his word. So when we pray according to this word, that's what God will answer. He'll hear it. See, a lot of people are praying opposite of the word. They're praying, you know, Lord God, give me my, you know, my neighbor's wife, you know, and think that that, that God's going to answer that. Well, no, the devil will come upon the scene for that kind of stuff. But God only answers things that are in line with his will, which is his word. So if you are praying, say, for instance, Lord, I thank you for the manifestation of my healing from, you know, whatever sickness or ailment is. He, he'll hear it because he says in his word that he, he, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up the wounds. It says that he that healing is for all. Look throughout the Bible, it says he healed. Everyone that came to him who had needed healing, he never said, oh, no, I'm not going to heal you. You have to deal with that. No, he healed them. The Bible says, and we, part of the Great Commission in Mark 16, will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So healing is already forever established, settled fact in heaven. And it needs to be in our thinking too. Because he, he already did it. The Bible says, by his stripes you were healed, and by his stripes you are healed. So if we were, we are, and we still are. Now, if you don't see the manifestation of it, it's because you haven't appropriated what Jesus already did. So when we're praying, we're not praying to ask God to, to do something that, that um, uh, we're waiting on him to do in the future. He's already done it. You were healed 2,000 years ago on the cross. Now you need to receive what he did on the cross. You need to appropriate that into the natural realm. So when you're praying according to God's will, according to healing, it says that by his stripes you are and were healed. And guess what? Then you're praying in line with, with, with heaven. And that's how you'll see with the result. But a lot of people are just saying, and this is the thing too, a lot of people are praying these types of prayers. Oh Lord, if it be your will, heal me. Oh, if it be your will, deliver me. If it be. Well, guess what? No wonder you're not seeing results. Because when we're praying according to his will, if we're praying for something that he already said is already yes and amen, you do never put if, no, no, because that is doubt and unbelief. That will negate your prayers every single time because he's already said that healing was your will, as his will. It's different if there's something that you don't know specifically, if something specific you get, you don't know it's his will. But when we already know that healing is his will, we already know deliverance is his will, we already know that, that, that he wants us to live in joy and peace and prosperity, to, 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 to walk in favor, to walk in health, then to put something like, if it be your will, to guess what? It's like we're saying, God, you know, I'm doubting what you already said in your word. And see, that's why a lot of people don't see answers to their prayer. That's why their prayers are not effective, even when they're praying for others, because they're, they're putting all these, these, these phrases that, that, are just, that are just completely just laced with doubt and unbelief. And that's why God, can, not that he doesn't want to answer, but God wants to answer your prayers more than you want them to answer. But you tie his hands, because God's not limited in himself. But people put limits on God. 
And a lot of times it's because of these ineffective prayers, these if it be your will, he will be type prayers. When God already says that he already healed you, now you need to receive it, appropriate it, because those lying scripture, even though they're real, they're lying in the sense that because they're trespassing on the temple of the Holy Spirit. We need to take authority over them. God's given you authority. And you can bind those spirits of infirmity and command them to leave your body and to receive the healing that he already has has has, has uh, uh, won for you on the cross. He bore it in his own body so that you could be healed and delivered and joyful and prosperous in every area. So we, we have to pray according to his will, which is his word. In John 14, John 14, 13 and 14, Jesus says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He said he will. But here's, but here's the understanding about it. Here, here, here is the, uh, the uh, cause and effect. A lot of times people want to say, oh, yeah, I want to, I want to do this, I want to do that, and they want the results, but they want to do the, what causes the results to come. It's that we have to ask in his name. We can't just think, or we, or we can't tap on there, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus, if it's your will. No, ask in his name. To ask in his name is to ask, ask in confident faith, because his name is recognition. His name is authority. There's power in the name of Jesus. He said when you ask in his name, not just, you know, coming and, and just putting out some just, you know, uh, wishy-washy, mealy mouth prayer that there's no faith back behind it. It's just, you know, a bunch of, you know, words coming out of mouth, but there's no heart behind it. There's no faith behind it. It's just a bunch of doubt and unbelief. It's just a bunch of maybes, ifs, and, and well, if you want to. No. Jesus wants to answer your prayers. But you have to understand. You have to come to him in faith. He says, what do we ask in my name? That will I do. Then he goes on to say, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. So we have to come in his name. And in his name, what is there? There's healing. There's deliverance. There's joy. There's peace. There's prosperity. There's divine favor. There's restoration. Every good thing, every perfect thing is found in his name. God the Father is the Father of life. So there's no shadow of turn. He's the Father that brings good gifts and healing and deliverance. Those are good gifts. So if you want to see uh, effective prayers, if you want results when you pray every time, then you need to start praying according to his will. Pray in his name. Pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. And he said, I will do it. Not maybe, he said he will. So if you're not seeing results, it's because you're not praying according to God's will. You're not praying in the name of Jesus. You're just praying, just, you know, just to uh, to hear yourself talk or just to think that you're trying to, you know, win brownie points with God. Oh, well, I prayed, I got that out my list. No, prayer is not something that's supposed to be some kind of... Uh, uh, you know, oh, Lord, I should have to pray. No, prayer should be joyful. You get to pray. Not, oh, I have to pray. I get to pray. I get to come into the presence of the Lord to first worship him for who he is, to praise him and thank him, and to come and then, yes, put my petition before him. But first, of course, we, we worship him. That's, that's the number one part of prayer is we worship him. We honor him. We thank him. We magnify him and invite his presence in. And then, yes, we can say, Lord, these are the things. Because he already knows what, that you have needs before you even ask him. But he wants us to come to him and put our petition. He wants us to come. But we have to do everything according to his will, which is his word, not just praying these not nonsense prayers and then wondering why we don't receive results. Think about it. In Matthew 6.10, Matthew 6.10, Jesus said, and this is a part of what we commonly call the uh, Lord's Prayer. I want to pinpoint on this, this particular uh, verse of it. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We say this a lot. Do we really understand the, the, the magnitude of it, the very you know, underpinnings, the depth of it? Thy, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Again, we've already established his will is his word. So when we're praying, we're basically saying, Lord, what, what your will is in heaven, that's what I want on earth. Well, God, guess what? In, in heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven, there's no no uh, diseases and unforgiveness. In heaven, there's no no defeat and, and sorrow and destruction. And so if you want to see heaven here on earth, right now, since you have to be on this earth, then you better start praying according to that. Lord, thank you that your will of healing that's in heaven, 
is right manifested here in my body on this earth. Your, your will of, of, of joy and peace and prosperity, because there's, there's, that's all there is in heaven, is joy and peace and goodness. And guess what? I want to see that here on the earth. Start praying accordingly. How is it in heaven? Well, guess what? Like I said, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no disease in heaven. There's no poverty in heaven. There's no lack in heaven. There's no bondage. There's no demonic, you know, uh, harassment in God's heaven. Now, in, and now in now in uh, the wicked heavenlies, yes. But in God's heaven of heavens, guess what? It's only good things. And if you want God's heaven to come manifesting here on the earth, then you need to pray according to that. So that's what he's talking about in this this part of the structure of prayer. And we need to have that in the forefront of our thinking. And then in chapter 18 of Matthew, 18 uh, verses 19 and 20, this is talking about the prayer of agreement. He says, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my father, which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Again, we have to gather in his name. Not just saying, oh, a, a two or more people just come together in, just in a, a church building and they just come together and they have some kind of a social club or some kind of a secret friendly, whatever you want to call it. No, we have to come together in his name, in faith, with, with all the power, all the truth, every time in operation, the Holy Spirit being allowed to move. You know, um, true doctrine being preached and false doctrine being exposed. See, we have to understand that the power of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, should be able to be in operation in every service. The moving of the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of tongues, deliverance means demons being cast out. See, this is what I'm talking about. But notice it says that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching, excuse me, touching anything, that word touching means to surround and to grasp. Agree, that's talking about forming a symphony. Think about a symphony in the natural realm. If if one of the uh, if one of them is off key, well, guess what? It's gonna uh, it's gonna cause a sour note to flow in the symphony. Well, if you pick the wrong prayer partner, if you're coming to agreement with somebody who's not in agreement with the full counsel of God's word, not only with what you're praying at that moment, but in the full aspect of it, then guess what? There's gonna be sour notes in that symphony as well, and then you're gonna come out and you're not gonna see. Uh, uh, turn around in prayers. When we pray the prayer of agreement, it means you have to first you know, find people that are in agreement with the full counsel of God's word, including what you're praying for that moment. They have pure doctrine, and then you come together and you're praying in agreement for that person. And then when you come out of that prayer, you're not saying anything different than what you have just prayed for. But you like hear a lot of people that come out and somebody asks them, oh, how's it up? Oh, well, we don't know. Or maybe it didn't work. Or maybe God, you know, is not going to move. Or, oh, I just don't know how. No. We, we are agreed. This is done, and we thank you, Lord God, that it's done, because that's what true faith is. We don't have to see things right then. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. It means we know that God's not a liar. Even though we don't see it in the natural, we're walking by faith. We prayed for this, this person or this situation, and we're in agreement. That's what true agreement is, not just, okay, I'm finding somebody that says they're a Christian, and even though, because you wouldn't want to think about it. You wouldn't want to, uh, if you're if you want somebody to come into agreement for the manifestation of the healing that Jesus already paid for, now you want to appropriate it. You, well, you wouldn't find somebody that didn't believe in, in divine healing because what they're going to do is they're going to negate your prayers. They're, even their presence there. You know, you need to find people, like I said, who are in agreement with this Bible. And they're first agreeing with God. They're in agreement with what you're praying for, and you come together. But just picking anybody because they say they're a Christian or going to just any church even because it has a spiritual name, it's not going to cut it. We need to be specific, and we need to be also discerning about who we're praying with when we're coming into a, that corporate agreement. Because if we're finding people who don't believe in the full counsel of God's word, and not just, and like I said, not just what we're praying for at that moment, but the full aspect of it. If people have false doctrine in their lives and ministries, well, we don't need to come into agreement because those things will cause there to be, you know, a, a, a fork, <laughs> you know, a, a, a monkey wrench. In the uh, uh, the prayer that you're being prayed, a lot of them will never be answered at all because of, of these types of things, and some will be delayed. Well, we have to make sure that we are in true agreement. Pray, make your prayer partners wisely. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the other one, so that's talking about praying according to God's will, which is His word. The other key I want to look at to effective prayer is praying in the Spirit. 
That means praying in tongues. Talking about when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit and you receive your prayer language. Now, I'm not talking about in the sense of having that uh, a, a corporate setting where there's an interpretation. I'm talking about just, and that's part of, we, we need to be in that too. But what I'm talking about is your personal prayer line, that you can pray anytime because it's, 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 it's not, you're not praying to people, you're praying to God. It's, it's, it's your, your communication, your communion with God. You're praying, you know, to him. It's not people. It's not it for the benefit of people. Now, praying in the sense of praying in tongues, that there's going to be interpretation to edify the entire body. Yes, if you're praying in that, that aspect of it, then yes, there needs to be interpretation in order to be able to uh, minister to the whole body. But your personal one-on-one -on -one time with God, you can pray that anytime, and it's you praying to God, your spirit praying to God. You may not understand it, and you don't. But guess what? The devil can't either. So that's that's one of the prayers that you can pray that he can't for in the sense that he, he doesn't understand it, so he, can, he can't come to try to defeat it in that sense. Now, he can try to cause you to be distracted when you're praying in your natural aspect because in the natural aspect of it a lot of times we arrive at a roadblock we don't know what to pray the flesh gets in the way that's when you say holy spirit you take over and he will praying in the spirit we're we'll look first at romans 8 romans 8 26 and 27 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knows what the mind of the what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Remember the first one is we pray according to God's will? Well, like I said, sometimes in the natural we pray to pray, we don't know what else to pray. We arrive at a roadblock, the flesh gets in the way. Guess what? I say, Holy Spirit, you take over, because he will pray according to the will of God. Perfectly. This is the, this is when you can pray a perfect will because it's there's no flesh involved in it. It's the Holy Spirit. Now you're speaking, you're giving voice, but it's the Holy Spirit praying through you the perfect will of the Father. It bypasses your natural mind and goes straight to the throne of God, and the devil can't thwart it because he doesn't understand it. Think about it. That's how powerful it is to pray in tongues. The Holy Spirit praying through you the perfect will of the Father in whatever situation you're in. It's the perfect will without any hindrance. Because yes, we are to pray in the natural, but like I said. Let me really put this into your, ingrain this into your thinking. Sometimes the flesh gets in the way. Sometimes we get our own little opinions in there, and it just negates that. That's why we have to make sure that we say, Holy Spirit, you take over. Pray daily in the Spirit. Pray. The Bible says as we're going to see that it builds us up in the inner man. It builds us up. It edifies us. It helps us to, to, to hear from God more clearly. It helps us to put the flesh down. Just, just like prayer coupled with fasting. Well, praying in the Spirit does the very same thing. Okay, let's just go there in Jude verse 20. Jude verse 20. It says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And he's praying in tongues, in your prayer language. Building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Think about it. This builds faith in us. This edifies our spirit, man. It causes us to, like I said, to, to hear God more clearly. To be able to focus on him, to put the flesh down, say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to hear your voice. A lot of times we say, Lord, what is your will? How can I hear your voice clearly? Well, start praying in the Spirit. It's, far, it's, it's just basically your spirit communing with God's Spirit. It's that deep, calling unto deep. And see, this is something that a lot of people don't even realize because a lot of people just, they, they shun this. They think, well, you know what? I have all the Holy Spirit because I got saved. I don't need anyone. No. You know, and even when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have it. You need even fresh infillings. We need fresh, a daily a fresh anointing. We looked at this recently about how to, you know, uh, to uh, to uh, walk in the anointing, you know, how to increase the anointing, how to, you know, be in that place of, of, of God's presence. We talked about hosting God's presence. We've looked at worship recently. All this is going to come about when we take the time to be disciplined in prayer. We take the time to say, Lord, I don't want to just, you know, have a have a just wishy-washy prayer life, just that, you know, uh, uh, just, I say, you know, a prayer over a meal, and that's it. No, I want to go deeper. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to hear from you. I want to see answers to my prayer and situations in my life and in the lives of those others that I'm praying for when I intercede. And you can't have effective prayer 
This is one of the keys right here, praying in the Spirit. In Ephesians 6, 18, we know chapter uh, uh, 6 of Ephesians is what we commonly know as the spiritual warfare chapter because it talks about the, the armor of God that we were to put on daily. And one of the pieces of the armor that a lot of people neglect is, is, is one of the most important. Well, they're all important, but this is one that's vital too, is, is prayer. In order to be effective in prayer, to be a prayer warrior, to grow in that place of prayer that we're to daily be disciplined in, we have to understand that this is a part of our armor because the armor of God is prayer armor. It says praying always. There's that always again. It's like we looked at in the Thessalonians. Pray without ceasing. And in Colossians, continue in prayer. Well, something we have to do always. Don't give up. Don't quit. Have a lifestyle of prayer. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. There it is. In the Spirit. And watching there unto all, unto all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We're also to be those who intercede on behalf of others. And the way we're going to be effective is when we do it, as it says in this case, in the Spirit. So we can, yes, pray in the Spirit. We can intercede in the Spirit. There's other places where it talks that we can even sing in the Spirit. We can pray in the Spirit in, the, in our understanding, and we can pray. Excuse me, we can pray in our understanding. We can pray in the Spirit. We can sing in our understanding, and we can sing in the Spirit. Whatever it is, we need to, to say, Lord God, I want the fullness of what you have for me. I don't want to just, you know, just live a, a, an elementary Christian life. I want to go deeper. The Bible says that we can even go into those deeper things of God. But you're going to have to have a thirst for it. You're going to have to have a hunger for more of his presence, a hunger for more of his word, a hunger and thirst to see, you know, uh, answers to your prayers. Because, yes, obviously, you know, when we pray, we, we're not, if, if you are truly speaking God, answer, then you're not just praying just to, to pass the time. You're not just praying to say, well, you know, I, I, I did this little old Christian ritual. It's not supposed to be a ritual. It's supposed to be a lifestyle. It's supposed to be a part of your relationship with him. So it's conversation with God. It's hearing from God. Yes, we talk to him, but he talks to us. We have to sit and listen. A lot of times we're talking so much that we don't even, have, we don't even allow him to speak. And that's why a lot of times we don't see answers either. It's because we're just, you know, da-da-da-da-da. And God's saying, okay, now let me speak. Let me answer. Let me show you what I'm going to do in this situation. So we have to be those who are always praying. And we're praying in, yes, in the natural, according to his word. We're praying with the, we're praying the scriptures, basically. And we're also praying in the spirit, even though we don't understand it. God does. It bypasses our natural mind, bypasses our natural thinking, it goes straight to him. And that's the time, that's the one time that you can pray God's will perfectly in the sense the flesh doesn't get him. Because the Holy Spirit, he knows what is needful in that moment, in that situation. He's praying it right through you. You're giving voice to it. He's praying through you. He's giving you the words to speak. And it goes right to God. The Father. And like I said, it throws a death blow to the enemy because he doesn't understand it. And what he can't understand, he can't, he can't, try, he can't defeat it. So that's what we have to understand. This is a part of, of our, our life as being prayer warriors. Those who are, take the time to be disciplined in our prayer life. Not just thinking, oh, it's just something that you, you do over a meal or just something that you do in, a, in just a corporate setting, you know, before you start a church service. This is something that you do daily in your own prayer time with God. That's some of the most effective, some of the most important times of prayer is when it's just you and God. You're coming before him in your, in your, in your devotions with him and also being developed in God's worship. The most important things for us as Christians, our first priority, yes, our highest calling is to be worshipers of God, having that intimacy with God. And also, the next one is, is spending time daily in his word and spending time daily in prayer. Those are the three most important disciplines in a part of our relationship as Christians with our, with our God. So we have, to be, we have to be those who pray in the spirit. And so we have to be intentional. That's like intentional. Intentional. I say this so much. We have to be intentional in prayer. Intentional in reading God's word daily. Intentional in spending time in intimate fellowship with God. That's how we're going to be effective. That's how we're going to see answers to our prayers, answers to all the things that we've been, you know, uh, petitioning God for, that we've been saying, Lord God, this is, you know, you know, what you said in your word about this situation. And Lord, I want to see it in my life. And you will, but you're going to have to come into agreement with it. You're going to have to speak it forth and believe it and pray it. Think about it. In First Corinthians 14, 2, we're talking about our prayer language, I just want to show you this.
He says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. So we're speaking mysteries. But guess what? God knows them. God knows them, and they are going right to him from the Holy Spirit, praying through you, and going right to, the, to, to God's ears in the throne room. And we're speaking mysteries. But guess what? Those mysteries the devil can't understand, he can't thwart them. But guess what? God's receiving them. That's why we have to open our mouths. We have to say, Lord God, use me as a vessel to speak forth your will, uh, that your will in heaven to come forth on this earth. Because until we get to heaven, yes, we're going to need God's will on this earth. We're going to need to see the healing and the deliverance and the prosperity and the joy and the restoration that is that, that is already in heaven. We've got to see it now and on the earth because on the earth, because Satan is the God of the world system, there's a lot of nasty things here. So if we want to see changes, if we want to see God's Will which is in heaven to come to manifest on this earth while we're here, here occupying until he comes, then we better start praying effectively. We better start praying according to his will, his word. And we better start praying daily in the spirit. And we better start praying in agreement specifically. Be specifically when you're praying, not just, oh, I've got it. I have an, I have an unspoken request. Or, oh, God knows. No, because he knows. He knows all things. But we need to speak things forth out into the atmosphere. Let the devil know you mean business and that he's not going to win. We better start speaking specifically. What do you need prayer for? And we're going to be specific about it. What uh, do you need deliverance for? What open doors? What things have you involved with so we can get to the root and we can cast those spirits out and cause victory to come, cause deliverance to come to you, or healing, or restoration, or whatever it is. So we need to really get this in the forefront of us. We have to understand this. We have to be those who believe. And, and in scriptures, it says that that whatsoever things we ask when we when we pray in Mark 11, believe you receive it, and then you will have it. Believe it, not when you receive it natural. You don't take faith for that. No, we have to believe before we receive it because we know God's not alive. We have to walk by faith. We believe in our heart. We speak with our mouth. We desire results, and it's done. We have to have the God kind of faith. Believe it in your heart and speak it with your mouth. And we don't doubt. We don't say anything different than what we've, what we've agreed with in prayer. What the word says, that's what we speak. Somebody asks you, well, you know, how's it going? You say, hey, it's already done. I thank you, Lord, that it's done. I've already received it because guess what? I spoke to the mountain and it had to, it had to go. It's gone. And I thank you, Lord, for the answer to my prayer. I'm not going to doubt. I'm not going to be in any unforgiveness. I'm going to walk in love. And I'm going to pray according to what your word says. And your word says that I can speak to the mountain. Your word says that I'm the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Your word says that I'm more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Your word says that I was healed by your stripes or whatever it is. And when you start speaking that, praying that, and guess what? When you start doing that, you're going to see answers to your prayers. So that is that is effective prayer right there. And that are some of the keys. Again, praying according to God's will, which is his word. Praying in tongues means praying in the spirit and being specific in your prayers. So really take this seriously. And understand you can see results in your prayers when you start praying effectively. And that these keys are just, just some of them. Get into the Bible and start finding out what God's word says about, about whatever situation you're in. And start praying according to what he says is the answer. And you'll receive it appropriated into the natural realm. And if you have questions, if you need prayer, if you need counsel, if you need deliverance ministry, you can click on the website link. And it will take you to, to uh, my contact information for, for email or for the phone number. So you can contact me and let me help you. And as always, remember that God's word is what stands forever. Amen.